Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video let's learn about the complete basics of the cloud in general, and specifically Microsoft Azure. Let's learn what it is, what is the cloud, what it can do for you, and a quick getting started guide on making a simple web API, which we can then call from a Unity game. There's timestamps in the video, and this video is meant as a base which I will then build upon in future video tutorials making specific cloud-based mechanics and tools, things like a leaderboard, the messages in Elden Ring, the online shared world of Death Stranding, and so on. Now, this whole thing, the cloud, this is something that I started researching myself. I'm curious to play around with some more cloud-based mechanics like those that I mentioned, and I really just want to understand the cloud in general. So I'm making this video partly to help solidify my own knowledge, and partly because basically I want to make a video that I wish exists when I start learning. Cloud can seem very overwhelming and confusing at first, but once you learn the main terms, it actually becomes much more understandable. So first, the complete basics. What exactly is the cloud? That word sounds so mysterious, but really what it means is basically just online servers. In the old days, if you wanted to build any kind of online infrastructure, you had to build everything yourself. So you had to find a data center, rent some physical space, you had to buy the hardware, install the software, manage all of the maintenance, networking, and keep it all running smoothly. That's a ton of work, even if all you wanted to do was just make a simple online leaderboard. Whereas nowadays, with the cloud, you can choose to let someone else handle all of that work, and you just focus on the parts that you really want to do. Meaning just focus on writing logic and making interesting systems instead of having to deal with all the physical hardware and all that. Specifically for game developers, and even more specifically for indie game developers, you probably just want to deal with writing the logic and not have to worry about anything physical, so for that use case the cloud is perfect. Something also pretty crucial about the cloud is, generally speaking, the services are on a pay-per-use basis, so if your use is small, if you have a small indie game that uses the cloud in some small way, in that case, chances are it won't be completely free or just cost an extremely low amount, in the order of cents to under 10 bucks a month. So as a developer, the ability to add interesting game mechanics without a huge cost, that is a huge plus. That's a very high-level overview of the cloud and cloud-related things. Now let's look at Azure specifically and do a quick getting started guide. You can create a completely free account and sign in. They give you a certain amount of free credit that you can use with your free account, so this is great for testing out everything. And as soon as you log in, it can definitely look quite a bit scary. You have so many options, so many services, so many things. It's really quite overwhelming. For me, I've already spent many hours learning all of this, and I still have no idea what so many of these resources, so many of these services, what they do. So over here, let's stick with the absolute basics. But before that, it helps to understand how Azure works on a top-down view and learn some terms. You have your Azure Microsoft account. Then on that account, you can have multiple subscriptions. This is how you handle invoicing and payment. So for more complex use cases, you can have different invoices for different departments. But for a small indie dev, chances are you have just one subscription. Then for each of those, you can have one or more resource groups. And each resource group is composed of resources. The resources are the actual services that Azure provides. For example, Web API is a resource. The SQL database is a resource, as is a serverless function, virtual machine, and so on. All of those are various types of resources. With resource groups, you simply group them. So for example, you'd have a resource group for an online leaderboard, and inside that resource group, you'd have a web API resource and a database resource. Then one resource group is assigned to a subscription for billing, and all of that is inside your Azure account. So that's a basic overview of how it works in the main terms. Whenever you create a new resource, meaning whenever you create something like a web API, you select the subscription, then the resource group where you want that resource to be created, and just create. So now that we know the basic terms, let's actually start by building something. Over here on the Azure dashboard, let's click on the button to create a resource. Then again, here you see dozens or even hundreds of resources that exist. Again, don't feel overwhelmed, let's start off simple. Let's find a regular simple API app. So you can either find them over here on the side, so for an API app, this would be under the compute. However, you also have a nice search bar up here, so let's search for API app. Let's click on enter. And up here we do see right away the API app made by Microsoft. So let's select it. This one, as it says here, it's a standard RESTful API. This is exactly what we want, so fastest way to build and deploy and so on, so exactly what we want. So let's go ahead, select this, and click on Create. Then over here it asks you for a bunch of things. Since we already covered all the basic terms, this should all be easily understandable. So first one is the subscription. So just go ahead and select the free subscription. Then it's the resource group. For this one, you can use some group you already have, or you can create a new one. So let's do that. Let's call this My First Web API. Next is the name. This is going to be the host name where you're going to access the Web API. This one has to be a unique global name in the entirety of Azure. 
So we're here on, let's say, my first web API dash code monkey. And yep, that's available. OK. Next up, we want to publish with code. We want to use that rather than using some pre-made Docker container. So let's go with code. Next up for the runtime stack. And here you can see that Azure actually supports a multitude of languages. So you can see .NET, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby, and so on. In my case, with this being a Unity C Sharp channel, I want to use .NET. And again, another thing which is a bit confusing are the .NET versions. So a quick explainer on those. First, you had the .NET framework that was meant to run on Windows. Then after that, to make the code multi-platform, they created something called .NET Core. With that, you could run C Sharp code on Linux or Mac or so on. And then after that, since it was a bit confusing to have two separate .NET packages, they merged them both, so now it's called just .NET. So over here, the one that we want is not .NET Core, not ASP.NET, but let's go with .NET 6. Next up for the operating system, for this one, choose the same one that you use to write the code. So in my case, I'm working on Windows, so let's select the Windows. Then for the region, this is just for testing, so select a place close to you. So in my case, I'm going to go with West Europe. Then down here, the app service plan. This is the machine specs and how much it costs. Right now, since we're using the free subscription plan, we just have an option for a free machine. But if you upgrade your subscription, then over here you'd see a button where you'd be able to click to see all of the available machines. There's tons of options to choose from depending on how demanding your web API is. For our case, we just want to do some basic testing so the free machine is more than perfect. Okay, everything is set up, let's click on next. Then over here you can integrate with GitHub in various ways. Again, for our simple example, we don't want any of this, so let's go on next. Then for networking, we also don't need this, next. For monitoring, let's leave the defaults. Application insights, this is one way that you can get data and logs from your application. So let's leave it enabled and click on next. Then tags, again, nothing we need right now. Let's continue. Okay, so here we see what we want to create. We want to make an API app under our standard subscription. We created a new group for it. We gave it this name. We're going to publish using code. We're going to run .NET 6. It's going to be located in West Europe, running Windows and on a free machine. Okay, everything is correct. So let's click on create. All right, as you can see, the deployment is in progress. So let's just wait a bit. And yep, deployment has completed, so let's go to resource. All right, here's our resource for our web API. And just with this, our web API is actually already running. Over here, we can see the URL. So if we click on this, we can already see it. And yep, here it is. So here is the web API default page. All right, awesome. So far, so good. Now, of course, we want to upload some custom code to our web API, so let's do that. Back on the API dashboard, over here on the left side, we've got a really useful quick start. So let's go ahead and follow this. Again, I want to write in C-sharp, so let's go with ASP.NET. It opens up this page where you can choose a development environment. So in my case, I'm going to be using Visual Studio. Then what we want is to pretty much follow all of this guide, which is actually pretty simple. Although technically, I should say that this guide is for making a web app as opposed to a web API. The difference is that a web app is kind of like a regular web page, meaning it's something meant for humans to read with images and text and so on. Whereas we want a web API, so something that is meant for programs to interact with and not really humans. So we want to be able to interact with it from Unity. That said, basically we're going to do things slightly different from this guide, but the basics of connecting and applying to Azure are the same. So let's actually follow this. To do that, we're going to be using Visual Studio 22. But before doing that, if you don't have it, go ahead and install it. The community version is commonly free. And if you already have it installed, then before opening up Visual Studio, make sure you have the required modules installed. You can run the Visual Studio installer, and this will show you the versions that you have installed. And if you already have something installed, go ahead and click on Modify. And for following what we're going to do here, make sure you have at least these two modules installed. So Azure Development and ASP.NET Web Development. So make sure both those are installed. Then go ahead and open up Visual Studio. And over here, let's create a new project. For the template, let's choose over here the ASP.NET Core Web API. Again, Web API, not the Core Web App. Let's go with the Core Web API. Go ahead, click on Next. Then let's give it a name, like My First Web API. Go ahead, choose a location, click on Next. Then choose the framework. Again, choose the same one that we picked previously. So in this case, .NET 6, yep. For authentication, let's use None to keep things simple, but do use HTTPS and everything else leave with defaults. Okay, let's click on Create. All right, here is our basic web API. We have a few files created by default. So the entry point is over here, the program. This adds some controllers, a bunch of things, but you don't need to worry about this one. Then it also has a weather forecast. 
This is a simple class with some data and the weather forecast controller, which simply does some things with that. We can just go ahead and hit on play to test out this default template. So up top, click on the play button. Now when you do, you might see some warnings about SSL and certificates. So go ahead and accept the self-signed certificate. Then even after doing that, you might still see an error. If so, go ahead and restart Visual Studio. Then after that, you should be able to hit play and it should work. Although you might see another warning, this time from your browser. Again, just make sure you are on localhost, which is where you're supposed to be. So just go ahead, click on advanced. In this case, we do trust our own machine. So let's accept the risk and continue. All right, so here we have our localhost page working. This is using Swagger, which is a really nice tool for testing out APIs. And in our case, by default, Visual Studio creates a sample with a weather forecast API, just like we saw. So there's this endpoint called weather forecast. This one, as you can see, is a get endpoint. And we can see down here an example of what it returns. It returns text.plane and inside contains all of this data, which happens to be our weather forecast. And we can even try it out. So let's click on try it out. This one takes no parameters. So let's just execute. And yep, here we did a kernel request on our localhost URL. And here we've got the response body. All right, so it worked. We did a simple get request and we got a return value. Now for our own testing, let's create a brand new API endpoint. You can go ahead and close this window. Then over here on the Solution Explorer, let's create a brand new controller. So let's right click inside the controllers folder. Let's add a new controller. Over here for the template, let's go into API and let's choose this one, API controller with read and write actions. Let's go ahead and click on add. Then give it a name. Let's call it testing controller. Make sure you end the name with controller. So in our case, we're going to create an API endpoint called just testing. But to make sure you add controller to the name, make sure there are no typos. So go ahead and click on add. And yep, here it is. This is the default template. Basically, this creates an endpoint under API slash controller. These rectangle brackets that you see here, this is going to basically interpret this. So instead of being under API and then literally spelled controller, it's going to be under API and then just testing. So we have the main controller class. And then over here, we've got various things. We've got a get under the endpoint API testing. Then we have another get, but this one is under API testing and then some integer value. This is one way to pass parameters into your get requests. Then we also got a post, a put, and a delete. If we just test this right now like this, so let's go ahead and click on test. And up here in Swagger, we already see our new endpoints. We've got a delete, put, get, post, and another get. Okay, now let's simplify our code to make our testing a bit simpler. So let's remove all these endpoints and leave just a very simple get, okay, just like this. And now let's create a custom data type that we want to return. We can define it in a separate file, just like we have here for the weather forecast. Or in this case for testing, let's use it just on this file. So let's do here a public class, call it testing. And let's just add a simple string message field. So a public string, call it message. Let's make it a property with a get and a set. Okay, just like this. And Visual Studio doesn't like it when it can be nullable. So let's make this a nullable string, just like this. Okay, so a super simple class with just one field, message. Now over here on the testing controller, instead of returning an i numerable of strings, let's return an object of type testing. Then over here, let's return, let's create a new testing. And for the message, let's say something. This is my message. All right, that's it. So now our get is going to return an object of this type with this value, let's see. So let's test it out again locally. So let's click on the play button. So up here we see we still have the weather forecast and then the testing. So let's go into testing. Let's go into API slash testing. As you can see the example scheme, it's going to return a string under the field message. So let's try it out. Let's execute. There are no parameters. And yep, over here, everything worked. So we did a request on the endpoint API slash testing. And the response body is a message containing this is my message. All right, awesome. Everything works. Now, finally, for the next step, let's do connecting and publishing to an Azure resource. And before publishing, let's just clean up our code. So let's get rid of the weather forecast controller. Just delete that one and the weather forecast, delete that one. Okay, so we've got our very simple. We just have our program.cs and then the testing controller.cs. Now for publishing, over here on the Solution Explorer, let's right click on the project. So not the solution, don't right click on that one, right click on the project itself. Then over here, you see a button for publish. And for our target, obviously, let's go with Azure. So let's click on next. We made a Windows service. So again, select that one. Now make sure you are signed in on the exact same account that you use for Azure. Then over here, you should be able to see your Azure subscription. And then over here, it should automatically load all of your app services. 
So let's select the one that we made, the My First Web API. Let's open it and yep, here we have My First Web API dash code monkey. So let's select that one and click on next. Then we've got an option for API management. This is an Azure tool for essentially acting like a middleman so you can have API stored in various places. Then you can use the API management dashboard to decide which one should receive the requests. But again, that's for a more advanced use case. So right now, let's just skip this step and click on finish. All right, so with that, the published profile has been created. Let's close this. And over here, we have everything ready for publishing. So let's go ahead and click on the nice publish button. Everything is running, the building is starting and it's uploading. So let's wait a bit. And yep, that's it. Our web API has been successfully published. We can go to our web API dashboard and over here, we can already see some requests. And you can also again, go to the same URL. And yep, the URL worked, although right now it's showing a empty white page. The reason for that is because the default index page was deleted. So we uploaded just our web API. And for using our get endpoint, it's super simple. So let's just go into our URL and let's just send our endpoint. So that was API slash testing. So if we go to this, and if there it is, here we have our message. This is my message. All right, awesome, everything worked. Now let's just make a quick change to see if everything is indeed working. So back in the testing controller, let's give it a different message. All right, new message, the file is saved. So again, let's go into the publish tab. And now we don't even have to go through that setup. We just need to click on the publish button. And yep, everything was published successfully. Then over here, if we refresh this page, if there you go, here we got our really nice new message. All right, awesome. So with this, we have our API project working in Visual Studio. And we can easily make changes, upload it, publish it, and have it working on Azure. And now just for fun, over here I have a demo Unity project. For accessing our web API is really the same as any other HTTP request. I covered that process in detail in another video. Over here I have the class made in that video. Although also one important thing is in that video I was focused on showcasing the get. So here in this class I upgraded it to also support posts to be able to send some data, and importantly be able to send some JSON data. This entire class is included in the project files for this video if you want to look at it. So with that, I can do a request to the web API. So just do a get request and use the URL that we just made. So on the Azure website slash API slash testing, we have our URL. Then if it's an error, it's going to log an error. If not, we're going to see our nice server response. Okay, so let's run this. And you appear in the game, we do see the server response and our really nice message. Okay, great. Now over here, I have a more complex example. I have a game with a mechanic kind of like Dark Souls or Elden Ring. So other players have placed down messages in the world. Now I can interact with the web API to get the nearby messages. And up here, we can see the response from the server. We get a whole bunch of JSON with some positions, some messages, some rotation, and so on. Then with that data, I just spawn some of these objects. And if I approach, yep, I can see the message that that player posted. So one message there, one message there, and another one in there. Then I also have the ability to add more messages so I can go somewhere, press a button, and here it is, a nice input window. I made this window in a previous video tutorial. So over here, I can type my message. I can press OK. And yep, there's my brand new message. So I've got this message in those two. Now I can quit the game and then play again as if I were a completely different player. And yep, here are all the messages, including the one that I just made. All right, awesome. Now for the code that is making this work, here I have a function which shows my input window. Then when the player presses OK, it creates a new structure of this type that I created. So it has the position, rotation, and the text. Then it does a web request, this time using post and using JSON. It does that into my API endpoint. It sends the message system save single converted into JSON, and then simply has a response which contains all of the other messages. Then over here on the web API side, for this one, I have an add message controller. So this is the endpoint, the same one that I'm using. I've got a simple post that is grabbing the message, grabbing this same object type, grabbing from the body. It adds it to the list of messages. Now in this simple example, this is just stored in memory. So this is not in any kind of permanent storage. This is just memory. Again, just keep it simple just for this demo. So it adds the message that it receives, adds it to all the other messages, and then just returns the JSON with all of the messages. Then on Unity, the code receives the response and loads the save JSON. Then here just grabs the message system save, cycles through all of them and spawns the prefab. So here it is, a really nice and simple messaging system, just like Dark Souls, just like Elden Ring, 
all of it made super simple thanks to the usage of the cloud. All right, so with this, everything works. This is the absolute basics. We created a service on the cloud and we access it from anywhere, including from inside Unity. Now everything that you really want to build is really just expanding upon this. I'm actually working on specific tutorials based on just this, some more advanced systems using Azure functions rather than a web API and combining them with storage and so on. Definitely stay tuned for those interesting tutorials. And if you want to learn more about cloud and Azure specifically, then I can highly recommend the Microsoft Learn site. I've gone through a bunch of their learning paths and I'll learn quite a lot. On the learn site, you can just go over here on their products, select Azure, then down here for types, you can select the entire learning path, or if you want, just go with a bunch of modules. And then here you can see tons of guided paths teaching you everything from a general overview of the cloud to some very more specific use case. So if you want to learn more, definitely check out the site. And with that, now you know the basis of the cloud, how to create a simple web API, publish it to Azure and interact with it from a Unity game. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.